Hello everybody, and welcome to Northern Lion Plays Donkey Kong Country! This is obviously a Super Nintendo classic, coming out in 1994 as a joint effort between Rare and Nintendo, and kind of completely shaking the platform tropes that had existed, well, maybe not completely reinventing the wheel, but absolutely, this was the best looking game at its time. I remember being a kid, I guess around six or seven years old when this first came out, completely blew my mind that games could look this good, and a lot of you are probably saying, wow, you must be old as shit. Well, I guess that is technically true, but seriously, this was the best looking game at the time when it came out, at least for me. Now you might be saying, Northern Line, why do a Let's Play of Donkey Kong Country? Has it not been done a thousand times? It's been done to death. Well, yes, but it's not been done by me. It's been an awful long time since I played through Donkey Kong Country. I figured now would be a good time to revisit the game. So this is going to be a semi-blind run. We'll see what I remember from when I was a little kid, and we'll see how much I've forgotten, how much the game kicks my ass. Because I remember, this game does get a little bit tricky. Wait off the bat here, there is a balloon that we can get, and the balloon gives us one up. Now... I'm not going to take too much time to explain Donkey Kong Country, because I figure pretty much everyone and their grandmother knows exactly how this game works. But basically, you play as a combination of Donkey Kong and Diddy Kong. You have a few different abilities here. Donkey Kong can roll into enemies. He can do a ground stomp here, or a ground slap that can do some things. He can also collect letters of the alphabet, and if he collects enough to spell out his own name, he gets an extra life. Similarly, if we get 100 bananas here, we can... Uh, get an extra life. But for now, we're going to jump on these lackeys of King K. Rule, who is our main nemesis in this game. Now, the game starts out pretty easy, but it does get pretty difficult as you get later on in the game. Now, you can see I just picked up an animal token there. We do have a sizable number of animal friends. Those tokens eventually give us access to bonus levels, but this is the real deal right here. We got Rambi the Rhino, which basically just stampedes through enemies and also gives us access to bonus areas that we might not have otherwise been able to uncover. So the Rhino tends to be one of my favorites. You can see I'm amassing a lot of extra lives here. The game tends to be pretty lenient at the start with that. There's another one for getting Kong. Kong, sorry. And there's another bonus room here. Now this is kind of like a slot machine type deal. Now if I can get all three of these in the same, I can get a token. So let's hit it on... Ah! I messed it up. And of course, immediately pure sadness for them despite having a pretty good run so far. Let's switch over to Diddy Kong for a little while. Diddy Kong is like the Luigi of this relationship. Oh no, I can't switch over to Diddy Kong right now because I'm still hanging with Rambi. That's cool with me. We'll complete the level here. Of course, upon completing the level, we don't get to keep Rambi, but that's okay. Now, in terms of, like, first worlds, uh, Donkey Kong Country, I feel, has one of the best first worlds, and I'm not talking about, like, economic status here, out of any game that I've ever seen. You can see, that first level is pretty iconic because it kind of introduces us to the jungle aesthetic of the game. This level introduces us to like the rope swinging mechanic, which also uh, comes in handy. Let's switch over to Diddy Kong for a minute here. Diddy Kong's kind of like the Luigi. He can jump higher, but he's also weaker, which I guess is not Luigi-ish. But uh, he's weaker in the sense that when there's certain enemies that he comes across, only Donkey Kong can kill them. Diddy Kong can only jump on them. And uh, maybe like cause them to get a little bit of uh, knockback. That's an example right there that just got me killed. So when you're Donkey Kong and you jump on those guys, you get sent back a little bit. But uh, that time I actually got sent to my death. So let's switch back to Donkey Kong. Donkey Kong, I feel, tends to be the stronger, uh, the stronger of your allies. Most of the time, anyway. There are times when you want to be Diddy so that you can, uh, whoa, what am, I th what am I thinking here? It's been a while since I fought those armadillos, clearly. Luckily, there's these DK barrels scattered all around. So if you lose one of your guys, just say basically, hey buddy, fuck you, and toss him over the side of Niagara Falls. And uh, you will be able to get him back. So let's do some swinging on these ropes, watching out for those armadillos, because apparently they are bigger pains in the ass than I remember. We'll continue on here. So as I mentioned, this is actually, at, si at times, a pretty tricky game. Maybe it's not Super Meat Boy level of difficulty, but it is pretty tough. Uh, so there will be times when I die an awful lot here, and I'm going to try to keep this as unedited as possible. So you're going to see a lot of those deaths and maybe a little bit of rage, even though that's normally not my, my type of thing. But if things get a little bit too hairy, like if I'm stuck at one spot for like 10 minutes, then I'll probably do a little bit of editing. But for the most part, this is going to be an unedited run through Donkey Kong Country. As such, and because of the fact that this is not like an expert run or anything, uh, you may- oh, I want to be Donkey Kong here. Switch back. Maybe I can get a jump on this guy and get up. Ah, god damn it. Maybe, oh, ah, I didn't want to go there. I wanted the, the G. Oh, well. Uh, so, like, I don't know where all the secrets are. And that's half the fun for me, is finding them as we go. So you see we can go hang out with Cranky Kong here. Uh, one thing that blew my mind that had not occurred to me until recently is that Cranky Kong, as indicated, or at least uh, kind of hinted at by that opening screen, 
Cranky Kong is the old Donkey Kong from the arcade game. And Donkey Kong here is his, his kind of cousin, or his, his nephew or something, his grandson, I don't know. I don't know who the hell Diddy is, he's like a love child of Donkey and Candy, I guess. Anyway, we're gonna, he says some funny things, but we're gonna avoid him for now, because he kind of, kind of tries to be a waste of time. Much like real grandparents, right? I'm <laughs> just kidding. Grandma, I love you, wherever you are, please come home. So here we come into the cave section. The cave level, Reptile Rampage, is actually probably my least favorite level. But it's still pretty good. It's the only level, I think, out of this first set that doesn't have some kind of, like, iconic element to it. Uh, like, obviously that first level has... Oh, that was, that was a terrible play on my part right there. That first level has kind of the jungle aesthetic. Second level has the ropes. We're gonna get a little bit later into uh, these barrels here. We'll do a little bit of barreling right now. Obviously a ton of secret areas scattered all over the place here. And these barrels are super iconic. Uh, but we'll, we'll have levels that do a lot more. To do with those explosive barrels as time goes on. Explosive? Would you really call them explosive barrels? It's a good kind of explosion. We're almost up to 100 bananas here. Game gives out an awful lot of extra lives right off the bat. Dare I go for those bananas down there? I will, but it's probably not necessary right now, though. The game is pretty lenient with things like continues, like you can continue the game quite easily. There was the halfway point right there. Uh, but it's not... Once you get a little bit later, it's not all that lenient about hanging out extra lives, or handing out extra lives. At least as far as I recall. And uh, my memory could be completely busted. Now, if you're a big fan of Donkey Kong Country, and I assume a lot of you guys are, feel free to talk about secrets in the comments. Uh, just try not to spoil the game for anybody who might not have seen it. Or who might, anyone who might be playing along. So, like, game ending spoilers, dick move. But just talking about things that I might have missed, or adding to the commentary that I'm kind of trying to do right now. Much appreciated, actually. Now we move on to the water levels. And normally in a game, particularly a platforming game, the water levels tend to be kind of the worst one, the ones that everyone hates. The water levels in Donkey Kong Country are fucking awesome, and I will tolerate absolutely no dissent on that. Uh, the swimming works really well, and as we all know, monkeys can hold their breath underwater. I kind of think Donkey Kong looks like Michael C. Hall in this... In this uh, kind of, what you call it, this profile that he has going on right now. Michael C. Hall's an, uh, he's a handsome man. So please don't take insult to that if you are watching, Dexter. I love your work. So we're gonna come down here. Donkey Kong controls really well. The animal on this is fantastic. Another thing, On Guard, the uh, swordfish that makes our, uh, our job a little bit easier, a one-up that we can get here. So he can charge, which allows us to go a lot faster and also kill enemies. And obviously a sore spot for water levels a lot of the time is that you just can't kill enemies. Not so in Donkey Kong Country. You've got to have half-decent timing, but you can absolutely kill enemies. And if you get knocked off of On Guard, they'll just kind of tool around down here in the uh, lagoon. You can come back and get them a little bit later. So you always want to make sure that you're exploring these upper caverns here, because the game plays a pretty frequent trick of hiding the O and the N and the G up here, but... I'm wise to their, uh, their tricks, at least on these early levels here. Definitely played these through like a hundred times as a kid. So in terms of the, the little secrets, I know it like the back of my hand. The big secrets, maybe I'm missing out a little bit. So you see that I collected a, a token. Uh, that might have actually been on the last level. Forgive me, I've got a backlog in my brain in terms of commentary. When you collect three of those animal tokens, it takes you to a bonus level where you use that animal and you can collect a whole bunch of extra goodies that will help you out. Lives, bananas, and whatnot. We're almost at the end of this level here. And also, how fucking good is the music? on these water levels. In fact, the music in this entire game is fantastic. Recently, well not recently, it was a couple years ago, there was an overclocked remix event where they remixed all of Donkey Kong Country 1's music. Actually, it might have been the whole series, I can't remember. Uh, and that was fantastic. Check out some of the remixes of that online if you haven't seen it yet. Now, here's Funky's Flights. We don't really want to go here, but basically, uh, later on in the game, if you want to move from stage to stage, we can get in this airplane and go wherever we want to go. And this is going to become important uh, because of the way the game actually saves your game. And one of the few complaints I have about the game is the way you save it. We'll talk about that when we beat this level. This is Barrel Cannon Canyon, and probably a well-known secret here. If you just run to the left side of the level right off the bat, you can get in these self-propelling barrels and pretty much complete half of the stage right off the bat. You gotta take a little bit of a leap of faith here, but trust me, you will survive. And then we'll get into the, the barreling section of the game. Obviously, this is so iconic. Uh, these games, or these levels, pretty much synonymous with Donkey Kong Country. And again, as a kid, the kind of thing that, even having been like a, a Mario, a huge fan of the Mario games, particularly Super Mario World and the Super Nintendo, playing a level like this, you're like, whoa. And they say Genesis does what Nintendo don't. I don't think so. 
Now, when they give you a TNT barrel, it usually means there's a secret nearby. Unfortunately, we won't get a chance to check that out because this big lug over here just uh, walked into the guy. Oh, that was that was a poor move on my part. Just walked into the enemy rather than using the TNT barrel for good. There's our N. I'm gonna try to play it cool. And then when you only have one guy, you want to make sure you're being a little bit more cautious. Now these barrel levels are gonna get a lot more difficult. But for now, you can see that there is some lenience. Uh, as in, you don't have to have like a perfect shot to end up in the barrel. There's a pretty good tolerance that the game has for uh, you being a little bit off. I'm not sure if that changes as the game goes on. But definitely right off the bat, they're a little bit more lenient, which actually adds to the playability of the game. These first levels are, are more fun than difficult. And a lot of bananas up here. I think the G is up here. Yeah, excellent. So yet another life. We're doing really well in terms of extra lives. We'll come through here, and then we will get to go to Candy Kong's Kissing Booth. Which, uh, you know... Haven't you always wanted to kiss a monkey? So basically, for saving the game, we have to get into these save points. You can see my, my elderly file up there. We're going to save it right here. Only 8 minutes in, but we've got 8% of the game done. Trust me, this is not going to be a 60-minute Let's Play. Things are going to get a lot more difficult as soon as the next world. This, this first world is kind of notoriously easy. Particularly the boss here, we're going to end up in very naughty's lair. And all we have to do for this guy is jump on his head, I think, four or five times, and then he'll drop a bunch of bananas. The, the whole premise of the game is that we want to make sure we're getting all these bananas because the the Kong banana horde has been stolen and that giant Nintendo banana will do it for us well that'll do it for the first part of let's play Donkey Kong Country hopefully you guys are enjoying it if for some odd reason you had not had a chance to play through this game before in your exceptionally young lives go check it out this is one of the classics on the Super Nintendo I will see you on the next part when we go to the monkey mines which includes some of the seminal levels of the game including Minecart Carnage. Anyway, I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.